this is where we left off last time. This is what our submarine looked like. Let's keep going with electricity. So I usually start with the uh, reactor. I press E on it. And then you can press 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or any of these. Um, and then I start with an orange wire, and I connect it to my first junction box, connect my first to the second, second to the third. Just all in a line like that. And then in my first junction box, I connect the super important stuff. So this could be engine right here. So what I do is I connect this. Uh, let's actually show you how to connect. Um, I press E right here. And then let's just say I'm going to connect, I don't know, load value. Don't do this, but I'm going to connect load value over there. And then I'm going to press E again into the condition out over here. Don't do this, but I'm, I'm just showing you how to do it. Um, if you want to uh, get rid of the wire, you click and drag and you drag it off of the screen and now it's disconnected. So we connect the engine and then we do the same thing for the pump, just like that, into the main junction box. And then we connect the nav terminal like this. And then we move on to the second bit, which is the oxygen, power in, and a small pump, power in. And then I connected the supercapacitor. I try to, uh, if it's military power, I make it brown. That's just my preference. And that's it for this. For this one, I connect it to the fabricator right here, the deconstructor right here, uh, the status monitor right there. And then something special is with relays. So I connect this to a relay. Uh, something to keep in mind with relays is they have a limit of 1,000 kilowatts of power that that can go through them um, which means you do not want to connect you know a, a, your large source of power this nuclear reactor to this 1000 uh, because only 1000 is going to go through uh, you can change the number if you want to something larger uh, but this relay is connected to two lamps they draw very very little power and then from these two lamps, they are also connected. This relay is also connected to another relay, which is down here. And then this relay is connected to each one of these diving suits, just like that. So diving suits. Um, uh, something to keep in mind with relays is when they're turned off. So initially they're turned on right here, but uh, you can add a switch to, to toggle them on and off. I'll show you guys how to do that later but you can toggle them on and off and it takes about nine seconds for this power to flow through this relay, uh, which means if you turn this on, it'll take nine seconds for the power to go through. And then in, if you turn this on, then it'll take another nine seconds for the power to go through. So there's a bit of a delay happening. I try to only use uh, two layers of relays. Uh, and in this case, I, it doesn't, it's not really critical if I have the lamp and the suits powered, uh, it's not super critical. So I'm, I'm okay with a little bit of a delay from that relay. Um, another thing to test out these lamps is when you, when you spawn in a lamp, so let's do that right now. Let's grab some random lamp like this. Uh, I spawn in this lamp. Uh, it has a range and etc. but it's not on, which means when I go to the light section like this, uh, that, this lamp, I, t I turn it on. This lamp, I did not. So let's turn it on now. So this is me turning the lights on and off like this. Um, you're able to change the on and off by the set state and or toggle state over here. So let's turn it on and then let's go to lighting. This way I get to see how bright my submarine is and if I need extra lights somewhere. In this case, I got away with just two, which is good. So let's turn off lighting. Uh, priority junction box, bilge plus duct. I think I talked about the bilge plus duct later. Uh, lamp is on, uh, suits and electronics. Okay, perfect. Uh, now let's talk more about wiring. The airlock hull is smaller. Okay, I was concerned actually earlier when I made the hull. I was concerned that this hull is way too big. So let's just take a look at that hull. Uh, let's get rid of all this stuff. Okay, I was concerned that if this hull is really large, so let's say I drag it and I move it all the way um, up here, that whenever I exit my submarine, my submarine is going to sink because it's going to be filled with water. So I actually just made it a little bit smaller compared to the previous one. Uh, this way I will sink less when, uh, when I exit. Um, 
navigation wires. Oh yeah, let's talk about navigation wires. Um, and also in the status monitor, I put it so that I don't require oxygen detectors. Otherwise, you won't see any oxygen information. So I turned that off. Um, and then I also connected. Uh, you can also connect. Yeah, you can also connect this into here by holding space and then left click. And now these two are connected. And then if you say um, display side by side, then you'll be able to see this status monitor whenever you're looking at this navigation terminal. Um, so that's that. Require oxygen nav wires. OK, let's talk about wiring up this uh, navigation panel to the rest of the ship. So I'm going to use a blue wire. And I connect this navigation to the set force of this engine right here. And then the Y velocity out, I connect it to the set target level of this pump. And then the toggle docking, I connect it to the end components of this um, hatch that comes in the game. So number one right here and number one right here. And let's see, what else? What, what other blue wires do I have? Oh, this is some complicated stuff. We're going to ignore that for now. But... Uh, I'm talking about these relays and all these wires. I think you should avoid that in your submarine. Um, let's talk about signal of this bilge pump. There is an automatic bilge pump that is created right here. This one, this one will work, uh, but there's this extra component that they use. They don't actually need to use that extra component. I don't know why the developers did that. If you just go from the signal out of this pump into the set speed of this water detector, then if you click, come on, click the water detector right here. If you just set the output to negative 100, then it means whenever there's water in here, this pump will, will work. Whenever there's no water, the pump will, will, will stop, will turn itself off. Um, and then there's also this other water detector right here connected to the duct over here where um, the one I flip the ones and zeros. So usually output is one over here and false output is zero. I flipped it. Oh, and I put the signal out here into the set state of this. Now, the reason why I flipped it is when there's water in here, I actually want to turn this duct off. When there's no water, I want to keep this duct open. Um, so it means whenever there's a hole up top and it starts flooding down here, then so long as the water is below this level, then we're fine. It'll keep deflooding. But then the moment the water touches this detector, this turns off. This prevents your whole ship from getting flooded. Um, same thing if you have a hole from the bottom. If you start leaking from down here and then it touches this, then this duct will close. This means the water won't keep going up into the, uh, the upper compartment. Uh, and then I also added an extra duct over here so that the water gets drained uh, from uh, this airlock into this bilge pump that I have. And there's a bunch of complicated stuff. You really should avoid all this complicated stuff in your first submarine build. But um, yeah, it's not complicated stuff. Uh, ducts flip with control. Oh, uh, if you press, con uh, let's grab this right here. Okay. If you hold control and you do N and M, it will it will flip an item. That's what that means. Ducts uh, don't put detector directly underneath. Oh, another thing with these detectors is here's another one in the ballast. In in this case, I want it to go to the roof of the ballast because this ballast is going to get filled. Uh, don't put it to the side. Um, if I put it down here, then it means the moment up here starts flooding, this duct will close because. This water detector is down here. So I just move the water detector a little bit to the side. Um, I'm going to go through weapons in a, in a part three.